Hospital Porter's Pride and Dignity stop the New World Order. Welcome to Panwo TV. And that, believe it or not, is a Glastonbury War Memorial. I mean, look, see? No, and that's strange. I mean, even even a war memorial in Glastonbury has a kind of that's a kind of like a Celtic knot on there. Has like almost like a Pictish, maybe a Pictish, uh, definitely pre-Illuminati look to it. No doubt about it. Anyway, it's uh, lunchtime on Saturday, um, and the speaker I've just seen was uh, Maria Wheatley. Now, I didn't think I knew her. Like I said at the beginning, I'd never heard of her before. Well, I have. Um, because a long time ago, we're talking over 10 years ago now at least, um, I went on one of her courses because, well basically she, she um, is a dowser and she studies a lot of the, the uh, alternative views to do with Stonehenge and things like that. It was quite remarkable because um, Stonehenge as we know it today is not how it's probably originally looked. It was reconstructed in the 1920s. Um, and not all of it is correct. She, um, it's also been dated wrongly. Maria says it's a lot older than it is. It's been dated to around uh, 2500 BC. Right? She reckons it's actually um, over 5,000 years older than that. It's dated 7330 BC. They found some more carbon dating material. It's 7330 BC. Um, Put it, it does put it about 5,000 years older than it is. Um, um, this, another strange thing is she talks about the, um, are these, like I said, people who are really, really open minded. Um, there's this thing called the Cursus, which is a like a procession, it's like, like an avenue just near Stonehenge. And um, she says that the archaeologists have always associated it with death. And she says, Archaeologists are obsessed with death because we have like the King's Chamber and the Queen's Chamber and the Pyramid, which was always intended to be a kind of... It was intended as a tomb, basically. That's their story. Um, <clears throat> she talks about the Bodleian Library, which I'm going to have to look into some more because um, it's this huge library in Oxford, one of the biggest in the world. It really demands its own, its own section, but she found some strange publications there stories that the st about how they built the stones and they actually moved the, st the stones actually moved by themselves and they they even had a, a, like an avenue between Marlborough where the, st the stones for Stonehenge were quarried or some of them some of them came from West Wales as well and the site of Stonehenge itself um, there's also re records in the water in the sort of like water table and evidence of the height of the water table that shows that the, the ditch around Avebury, the Avebury Ring, was filled with water. And the word Avebury sounds a bit like a, a, a word in the Basque language, which is Urbury, which means new war, place of new water. And the theory is that the, the people in Britain, at the time Stonehenge was built, this was before much, they didn't speak any language spoken here today. English wasn't there. And even the, the Gallic and Welsh Celtic languages had not yet arrived and that we spoke of a Vasconic language, which is one re related to modern Basque, and that that's where the word comes from. Um, the most, one of the most interesting things she says, well, she talked about yin and yang water. There's different types of water in terms of their energies. Um, and she says, what, are, what the water we drink is yang water, and yin water is sort of like more natural. And this ties in with the work of Victor Schauberger and his theories about water about how you treat water in a certain way to get all the, the proper energies out of it. Um, and she says that Oxford University extracts yin water from the ground and drinks that, and I thought, wow. <laughs> um, now, as I said, I thought I hadn't heard from her before, I, but after a while I realised that I did, had met her before, I knew her, because I went on one of her courses, but it was a long time ago, like I said, it was over 10 years ago. I went um, on a course there. I was invited there by somebody who called herself a friend, but I later fell out with big time because I didn't like the way she treated me. But we went on a, um, a course to where you learn about dowsing, which is working out earth energies using pendulums and and uh, you know wires, you know rods. It's a complicated business, but I remember that there was an old man with her, who, with her, who was was her father. 
And um, well, believe it or not, um, that's Dennis Wheatley, the, the writer. Um, I didn't realise this at the time. She's called Maria Wheatley. Uh, her father was the Dennis Wheatley, the, the writer. And Dennis Wheatley has written many horror stories and stories about occult magic. For instance, a very famous book called The Devil Rides Out, which is made into a, a very famous film with Christopher Lee and Charles Gray about a, a group of people who bust a, a, satanic, a satanic ritual ring, people involved in black magic. Um, so, I mean, he, he would have known what he was talking about, that's for certain. Um, you know, she, she's, she's fascinating listening to her because she knows so much about these the monuments that litter this country and the true story behind them. So Maria Wheatley did a good job there on stage, um, very interesting. And um, as she quite rightly says, you know, the elite know about what's good, the, the true story of what's going on, and they use they're utilising this knowledge which has been kept from us. So in this way, she's echoing what. Um, Gary Brillcliffe, Brillcliffe said that the uh, the in the early 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 earlier schedule. Anyway, I'm having a nice time walking along through Glastonbury, and um, that's Glastonbury War Memorial over there. Hmm. Hospital Port's pride and dignity. Stop the new world order.